When I was in high school, back in Provo, Utah, the days before cell phones were common, my friends were to come over to pick me up from my house one night. We had made plans at school for them to pick me up at 7 p.m. At 6, my parents said I had to come with them to do something, and I totally forgot to call my friends and tell them. They came to my house at 7 p.m. and called the house phone. No one answered. There were four of them in the car. They all told us the exact same story. They said that they were about to pull out of my driveway, but they saw someone peek through the blinds from the bedroom on the top floor right. That was my room, so they assumed that I was fucking around. Five more times, they said that someone would peek through the blinds, and a couple of them said they even saw the person's eyes. We got home at probably 7.10, 7.15, and they were still in our driveway. One of my friends came over and said they thought I was messing with them. Then they asked me, So, who is staying in your room? I told them that no one. So they asked, Who's home at your house right now? Again, I told them, No one. Their stone-cold faces then told me what they had seen repeatedly over the last 15 minutes. At first, we all thought there was a burglar in the house or something, so we called the cops. They came over and inspected the house. There was zero signs of break-in, nothing was touched, and nothing was stolen. Our house had an alarm on it, so there was no way someone could have come into the house without setting off the alarm. My family, my friends, and the cop all kind of stood around for a few minutes, trying to make sense of the situation. My friends swore up and down, and still do, that they couldn't have imagined what they saw. All four of them saw the same things, and it wasn't particularly a dark night, so their eyes wouldn't be playing tricks on them. To this day, none of us can make sense of the situation. A couple of years ago, in Salt Lake City, me and my friends were walking the couple blocks back to the hotel, smoking cigs and minding our own business, when four vehicles rolled up on us, all jumped out, and just started swinging at everyone, even the girls. Being outnumbered at least two to one, we scattered, and I slowed down just enough to get one of the girls in front of me, and that's when someone caught my arm and flung me around. All I saw were a bunch of blue flashes and blood everywhere, I was only 15 years old at the time and no match for any of these scumbags. All that blood made me slippery eye and got loose from the ones that were holding my arms while their buddies were taking turns punching me in the face. I stumbled through a stone cutter drive up and accidentally smeared blood all down the side of a white Cadillac as people started screaming at the sight of all of it. I just kept going and ran across the road into the hotel parking lot and could see the lobby thinking I was safe just as the same vehicles screeched to a halt right in front of me, all jumped out and beat me unconscious. I woke up on my back choking on blood and could barely see enough to make it into the lobby. My friends were hysterical and thought I had been shot or stabbed from the looks of things. Nope, just severely beaten. Lucky me. Everyone else got away before the fuckwits could get the best of them. My mom showed up to drive me to the ER because ambulances cost too much when you're a kid with no health insurance, a broken nose, stitches in my face and eye, cracked eye sockets, ribs, fingers, bunch of bad ones, a bunch of less severe injuries, bruises and scrapes everywhere. I was blind for about a week from my eyes being completely swollen shut. The whites of my eyes were all bloody for about a month. It gave me PTSD bad and I couldn't go outside at night for a long time. I also had to have nose sinus surgery later in life, which was its own little nightmare. Here's the screwed up part. All of those clowns got pulled over on I-15 and were arrested because they had been driving around doing this shit all night to other people and were drunk driving, had warrants, etc. About 10 days later, a detective came over and showed me pics of these fools. I identified three or four of them, but the ones I happened to identify were all 17. The rest were 18 and up. So the cops basically said our only recourse would be to sue their parents for the hospital bills and no charges ever came of it. My mom ended up paying the hospital bills. That Halloween, I didn't need a costume. Back in 2022, my partner and I were walking with our dog. Saw another small Bishan dog coming from the opposite direction. So we stepped off the sidewalk and pulled our dog in close to us to let them pass. The other owner is on the phone, so it's not like we can communicate with him, really. Backstory. 
our dog isn't fantastic on a leash. As soon as she hits the end of it, she gets frustrated and gets loudly barky. It's usually just her being weird, but some dogs don't like it. Usually, it's not a problem though, unless the other dog snaps at our dog. Then ours snaps back too, and a fight ensues. She's also protective of us. Because of this, we have a strict no meeting on leash rule. The other guy seems to get the idea and goes to just pass. And then right as he's in front of us, he lets out his extendo leash and his dog comes straight to our dog. He never asked if it was okay and really everything about our body language was telling him it wasn't. But he was on his phone and probably not paying attention. We try to play it cool so as not to stress our dog. They sniff butts, but the little dog starts circling around us and we get tangled. Then our dog hits the end of her leash. Boom, fight. I grab ours by the hips and yank her back ending the fight. But long after the fight had finished, really probably just a few seconds, I realize the guy is trying to hit my dog in the head with his big ass flashlight. Like stumbling around, aiming for my dog swinging and missing. Also, not giving a shit about his own dog, who is now running away from the extendo leash, dragging on the ground. I step in between him and scream, don't hit my dog, which is when he finally stops, because hitting a person would be a much bigger deal than hitting dogs. He then proceeded to tell me in great detail how he was going to shoot me and my dog, what kind of guns he was going to use, and how he was going to dismember and dispose of my dog's body. It was terrifying. I hope you found these stories as chilling and unsettling as I did. It's a stark reminder that sometimes reality can be stranger and more frightening than fiction. If you enjoyed these tales of suspense, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more spine-chilling content. This is your host, Nicholas Black. Until next time.